Throughout our everyday lives, we come face to face with various economic principles without even really knowing it. Whether it's opportunity costs such as deciding whether to get a Netflix or Spotify subscription, or weighing the benefits versus the cost of eating a hamburger or a salad at a restaurant, economic concepts are hidden everywhere. Today I'm going to look at the economics in one of the most popular books and movie series of all times, The Hunger Games Trilogy. So what exactly are the economic concepts in The Hunger Games? In addition to these uh, listed here, uh, opportunity cost, capitalism, free markets, and comparative advantage, I'm going to be focusing on specialization and division of labor. But before we get into that, let's define those two terms. So, specialization essentially means focused labor, or labor that is designed to do one job and one job only. For example, at a fast food restaurant, there might be one or two people that are de designated to be the french fry makers and do nothing else except for making french fries. On the other hand, division of labor is where a certain amount of work is split up into different groups. So for example, if you had 10 workers in a restaurant, you would want to split them up to get the most work accomplished as well as the highest level of productivity. When you put these two um, concepts together, you can kind of see how they work hand in hand. Connecting the two definitions would sound a little bit like this. A certain amount of laborers are split up into different groups to carry out a unique and specialized task which creates the highest level of productivity. So how exactly do these concepts uh, play into the Hunger Games? Well, Pan Am, which is the Hunger Games' nation, is divided into 13 different districts. Each one produces a different type of good. So District 1 produces luxury items, District 2 creates masonry, 3 makes technology, 4 catches fish, 5 generates power, 6 develops transportation, 7 chops lumber, 8 creates textiles, 9 harvests grain, 10 cultivates livestock, 11 produces agriculture, and 12 mines earth minerals. And the final district, the 13th one, the capital basically consumes all of the goods produced by the other 12 districts. So besides the capital, you can see that each district is assigned one type of labor in order to create the most effective amount of produce. Not only is, are the district's labor specialized, but also the tribute's fighting and survival ability seen in the movie. So, for example, when the, when the tributes are all gathered into a training room, uh, the scene right before they are put into the arena uh, to actually fight, each tribute is able to show off their special skills. Katniss is seen to be particularly keen with a bow. Peeta is excellent at camouflaging himself and hurling massive weights. And other tributes have skills such as creating poisons, hiding, scavenging, and even knife throwing. So as you can see, economic concepts are nearly everywhere. So the next time you watch a movie, read a book, or listen to your favorite song, be on the lookout for economics. Thank you for listening, and may the odds be ever in your favor.